what is going on guys? Nick Heron here with some more fantasy football facts for you guys today. We're going to be taking a look at my top 10 fantasy football sleepers for the 2017 season. Guys, if you are enjoying this video, make sure you click that like button and of course subscribe to the channel if you are new. We'll be bringing you guys plenty more fantasy football content as the season goes on. So let's start off with the rules of this video. First of all, the players that are in this video are all players that have an ADP of the ninth round or lower on FantasyFootballCalculator.com. Uh, we are also primarily looking at PPR formats, just FYI, because it is important to consider that ESPN did move over to a PPR format as their standard scoring now. So no longer is ESPN standard scoring non-PPR. So keep that in mind as you're drafting, guys. Uh, the other thing is that I do have to have these guys ranked higher than what their ADP is by at least a couple of picks. So that's, that's kind of the basic rundown. Everything other than that is open. And guys, we'll start it off first at the running back position. I have CJ Procise of the Seattle Seahawks. Current ADP has him in the ninth round, running back number 43. I actually have him up at 36 in PPR formats. I think he could even be higher than that potentially, depending on how things go over the next couple of days and weeks here leading up to the season. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that he has actually outplayed CJ, or he has actually outplayed Eddie Lacy and Thomas Rolls here in the preseason and in camp. So that is a pretty important thing to consider. He's clearly the third down back as well, the guy that's going to go out there and catch some passes. He was limited as a rookie due to injuries in 2016, but I think he's capable of catching 60-plus passes this season, and of course that would make him extremely valuable in PPR formats. And also he could have eventually emerge as the top running back in Seattle, depending on if Thomas Rolls and Eddie Lacy just continue to kind of struggle as they have in the first couple of weeks of the preseason and, and in training camp. So moving on, we're moving on to Green Bay, where we have Jamal Williams, another young running back, a rookie this year. He's actually going at the end of the 10th round right now as RB47 in 12-team leagues. I have him at number 42 among running backs, which is a little bit higher. He's primarily working as a second-string running back right now, but he has practiced with the first team as well ahead of Ty Montgomery. So he's kind of splitting first team duties as it currently stands right now with Ty Montgomery. I will say that Ty Montgomery isn't built to take like 200, 250 carries. So I would be kind of surprised if he ends up doing so, which means Jamal Williams is going to have some sort of value in this offense. Unfortunately, he's not a great pass catcher or we haven't seen that out of him yet. So I doubt that he's going to step in and take a whole lot of catches away from Ty Montgomery as a running back. But still, even if he does end up getting in there and getting some goal line touches, we've seen Eddie Lacy score 10 or more touchdowns twice in this Green Bay offense. So that's certainly something that Jamal Williams does have in his capabilities. So I'm not opposed to drafting him as like an RB4 as it currently stands right now. And honestly, he could move up to an RB3 or even an RB2, especially if Ty Montgomery were to get injured. I will say that you're probably going to have to wait and see on him. You can't start him early in your season, but he's somebody to keep an eye on, I would say, as the season continues to roll up. Now we're going to move on to the wide receiver position, keeping it in the NFC North, though. We've got Kenny Galladay of the Detroit Lions. Current ADP is 12.05, so fifth pick of the 12th round, wide receiver 56. He's getting undrafted in a heck of a lot of leagues right now. I have him ranked at number 48, which does make him a low-end wide receiver four as of right now. This is a third-round pick from this season, six foot four, 215 pounds. Does that sound familiar at all, that six foot four frame? Does that sound familiar to any Detroit Lions wide receiver that you might be aware of? Now, granted, Calvin Johnson was a little bit different pedigree than Kenny Galladay, of course, uh, and he was also about 15 pounds bigger. But still, they haven't really had a whole lot of big body wide receivers in Detroit aside from Calvin Johnson as of late, and Kenny Galladay kind of fits that bill. And, and what's been happening so far in camp is that he's actually playing outside opposite of Marvin Jones. Golden Tate's moving into the slot, so they're running kind of three wide receiver sets like that, and that's where Kenny Galladay is going to do some damage on the outside, going deep, making plays on passes down the field. Detroit hasn't really been doing that over the past couple of seasons, passing the ball deep down the field. Matt Stafford, despite the big arm, has actually been kind of more of a dink and dunk passer, but I do like the possibility of extending the field and getting that ball deep down the field to Kenny Galladay. I think he has the skill set to do it. And what people have been saying is that he has been really kicking ass, honestly, in uh, preseason as well as, of course, in training camp where a lot of the, that stuff gets shaken out, whether he's going to play or not. So uh, I will say that he's probably better in dynasty formats right now, but I still think he could have some value, honestly, this season. So definitely keep an eye on him. Back to the running back position, we've got Duke Johnson of the Cleveland Browns currently going in the ninth round. 
and he is RB number 40. I have him ranked all, all the way up at RB number 33 right now in PPR formats. Obviously, he does drop quite a bit lower than that in non-PPR formats, but I still think right now Duke Johnson's getting severely undervalued. He's He finished eighth in the league last year with 53 catches at the running back position, and that was despite having limited time on the field. He's also fourth in catches at the running back position in the two years that he's been in the league. So definitely pretty impressive numbers there. He is certainly somebody that can contribute as a receiver. The Browns have been talking about that he could potentially slot in as their slot wide receiver in some packages as well, which is, of course, pretty darn valuable in fantasy formats. He is stuck right now behind Isaiah Crowell. So, I, I mean, that's it's unfortunate right now for a guy like him because he just isn't going to get many opportunities to carry the ball. But what I would say is that one injury can change that very, very quickly. This is a guy who is extremely talented. Don't let the Cleveland Browns teach you anything other than that they just hold back talent. Like, that's seriously what they've been doing for a long, long time right now. So, uh, Duke Johnson, if he does get the opportunity, I think he has the serious capability of being a, a low-end RB Maybe even an RB1, honestly, depending on your scoring format, of course. But I think if he were, if like, for example, if Isaiah Crowell were to go down, I would be surprised if Duke Johnson didn't finish as a running back to this season. So certainly great value going at RB number 40 right now. Watch some of that tape on Duke Johnson. I think you'd be pretty impressed. I, I certainly was. It opened up my eyes this past season when I watched a bunch of his tape. So moving on, Austin Safarian Jenkins, now a member of the New York Jets. The mere mention of him should make us quiver. I mean, this is a guy who has been an extreme bust. Uh, he's had some serious legal problems off the field. He's currently being undrafted. I actually have him, though, as my tight end number 13, so just outside of the tight end one. But a lot of tight ends are getting... There's a lot of teams that are going to draft multiple tight ends this season. So he is certainly somebody that should be drafted, in my personal opinion, in fantasy drafts right now. The beat writers for the Jets are saying that he is, quote-unquote, dominating in camp. That should tell you something, man, especially on a team that really doesn't have a whole lot of physical talent on the offensive side of the football. This is a guy who could potentially lead the team in catches. Now, he is suspended for the first two weeks of the season, so you do have to find another option at least to start the year. But I would not be surprised if Austin Safarian Jenkins does very, very well for fantasy numbers this season. I don't expect him to put up Gronk numbers or Travis Kelsey numbers or even like Greg Olson type numbers, but... He could certainly be a guy who finishes as like a top eight fantasy tight end. And right now, he's being undrafted, like I said. So great value potential here out of Austin Safarian Jenkins. And if he does start the season off weak, obviously he's going to miss the first two weeks. But additionally, beyond that, weeks three, four, five, if he's not doing much, you cut him and move on. You can draft him literally with your last pick. So if you're somebody that likes to reach up a round or two to draft defenses and kickers, wait till the final round and draft Austin Safarian Jenkins as maybe your backup tight end. I think that's a good option for a lot of teams. The Jets just don't have very many passing options right now, and he honestly, like I said, could lead that team in catches. So now on to the quarterback position. This is the only QB on the list, although there are a bunch of other quarterbacks that I think are being undervalued. Maybe we'll get into that at some point. But Phillip Rivers of the San Diego Chargers, current ADP in the 10th round. I have him as the quarterback number 11. His current ADP has him as the quarterback 13, so not a whole lot of difference. But I actually have him ahead of some guys that a lot of people would be pretty surprised about. I have him ahead of uh, Cam Newton. I have him ahead of Dak Prescott and Derek Carr. I know that sounds crazy on the surface, but Phillip Rivers threw for 33 touchdowns in 2016. Yes, he led the league in interceptions. I get it. There is reason for concern. This is not a riskless proposition by any means, but he had injuries to Keenan Allen, Antonio Gates, Travis Benjamin, other guys in the offense as well. Running backs were injured, all kinds of problems on that offense, but Philip Rivers still threw for 4,400 yards and 33 touchdowns. That's crazy. Now you're telling me that he's going to add the, the healthy returns of Keenan Allen. He's going to have Antonio Gates, Hunter Henry. He's got Travis Benjamin. And now they're also adding Mike Williams to the outside. I mean, this is a seriously high-powered offense, potentially. So I, I think he actually has an outside chance of leading the entire league in passing yardage this season. Again, I know it sounds crazy, but Phillip Rivers is a freaking beast, dude. And this is the end of his career. This could be his last hurrah. I think he's going to go out slinging the rock, boys. All right. Now moving on to Dante Foreman of the Houston Texans. Current ADP, 13th round, 10th pick. And he is RB61 right now in Fantasy Football Calculator. I have him as RB51. So a low-end RB4, high-end RB5. But I certainly think he should be drafted in every league right now. He crushed in the first preseason game. Granted, against mediocre competition in like the third 
uh, third quarter, fourth quarter, those type of guys that are not probably going to be out there for very long. He is ceremonially, in my opinion, right now behind Alfred Blue on the depth chart, but I don't believe that. I think Deontay Foreman is going to have a pretty big role in this offense, backing up Lamar Miller. I would not be surprised if Lamar Miller gets his carry scaled back a little bit this year to try and keep him healthy, because we have seen that be an issue for him in the past. And honestly, Lamar Miller has not been great in Houston. I think there is an honest possibility that by the end of the season, Dante Foreman is the top running back in Houston. So, you know, certainly a good kind of a, a lottery ticket type of pick at the end of your draft. And then last but not least, oh, actually, I have two more, excuse me. We've got J.J. Nelson of the Arizona Cardinals, round 14, pick number 7, and wide receiver number 71 right now. I have him at wide receiver 61, so... You know, he is definitely not somebody that you're going to draft as, like, a, a guy that you're relying on or anything like that. But he has been running with the first team in Arizona right now ahead of John Brown because John Brown just can't get on the field. This is a guy who's seriously hurt all the time. And, yeah, we understand it's because of an issue that he has with the sickle cell trait. But for coaches, that doesn't really mean anything. If you're not on the field, you can't contribute. So that's why they're getting really frustrated with him. And Bruce Arians has come out and said there might not be a spot for John Brown on this team going forward. So, I mean, there is serious concern as far as that goes. That bumps J.J. Nelson up, of course, and it moves John Brown down. I had John Brown as a guy that I was kind of targeting early in the drafts, but thankfully we haven't really had enough of them where I've really been burned by John Brown at this point. But right now, I would be having, I would be pretty hard-pressed to draft John Brown ahead of J.J. Nelson, to be completely honest with you. And I, I know that the upside is great with John Brown, but with J.J. Nelson, this is a guy who is a big-time playmaker. We've seen it before. He is a little bit too small to be a primary target, but of course, the Cardinals have Larry Fitzgerald and David Johnson, so I mean, he's not going to be the top guy on that offense by any means. He's at best the third option, maybe even the fourth option in that offense, to be honest, but he could be crazy, crazy good in best ball formats, so if you're the person that plays those type of formats, check out J.J. Nelson's numbers and uh, get back to me on that in the comments section below what you think about him. And uh, one thing I would say about J.J. Nelson is he is certainly more valuable in standard scoring four matches because he does have those ups and downs, and he doesn't catch a lot of passes. But when he does, they can be 40, 50 yards down the field for touchdowns. So, uh, again, standard scoring formats a little bit better for him. He does have a lower floor than a lot of other guys do that are on this list. A couple other guys, James Conner of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Current ADP is in the 14th round. I have him as my RB68 which, again, that's super low, but he's a guy I think that you can honestly take a shot at, at least. Third-round pick by the Steelers this season, battled cancer throughout college as well, so a great story. But he is the primary handcuff for Le'Veon Bell this season, and Le'Veon Bell's still holding out. So there is an outside possibility that James Conner could be this team's starting running back in week one. Granted, I'm not counting on that by any means, but even if he isn't, I think that there is a possibility that he does get some playing time. Le'Veon Bell has had some injuries. Unfortunately, he's not going to have much value unless that happens. But I do think that he is somebody, if you draft Le'Veon Bell, take him with your last pick. Why not? I mean, he's a good handcuff to have, just like we've seen in the past with D'Angelo Williams. This is a guy who could step in and instantly be low-end RB1, high-end RB2 type numbers. And then last but not least, Dallas Cowboys wide receiver Cole Beasley, a.k.a. Cole Beasley, 11th round, 11th pick, wide receiver 53 right now. I have him ranked as my wide receiver 42 in PPR formats. He led the Cowboys with 98 targets and caught 75 of them. And he also led the team with 833 yards receiving. Now, granted, Des Bryant did have some injury problems last year, so that probably is not going to necessarily be the case this season. But the point is, is that Cole Beasley had high usage all season. In fact, he caught four or more passes in 14 of the 16 games the Cowboys played in the regular season last year. Also caught four passes in the one playoff game that they played. So it continued deep into the season as well. This is a guy who is a, a very high floor player for the Cowboys and somebody that if you were, you know have, have some risky type players higher up on your team, he's a guy that can slot in kind of as a more safe play at the end of your draft. He's not going to catch a lot of touchdowns, but he does have the potential to catch 80 passes this season. And for a guy who's probably your wide receiver six, I think that's pretty darn good value. So I would certainly look at him. The other thing to keep in mind is that with Ezekiel Elliott out early in the season, the Cowboys might end up passing the ball short to kind of replace that running game just a little bit. So Cole Beasley certainly the guy that would slot in to benefit most from that, I would say.
So that is going to do it for this video, guys. Hopefully you did enjoy it. Thanks for the suggestions in the comment section below as well. This was a user suggestion. Somebody asked me to make this video, so that's why it's here. So congratulations for getting your video made. Hopefully you guys did learn something from it. If you did, again, make sure that you drop a like on it and subscribe to the channel if you're new. I do have my full rankings listed in the description of this video below, so you can go on that, click it. Google Spreadsheet, very easy to use and navigate. Um, got PPR rankings, standard scoring rankings, got overall rankings. We also have positional rankings, everything like that that you could possibly need to get ready for your fantasy draft. Make sure you follow me on Twitter as well, at ClickWithTV. I would appreciate the follow. Let me know if you have any questions over there, and also leave them in the comment section below. I'll try to answer them either with a video or with a comment. Thanks again, guys, and be sure to check on back here for some more fantasy football facts.